with Russian forces bearing down on Kyiv, the orders to Maxim Skobenko and the other men in his volunteer militia unit on Tuesday were simple, prepare. Heeding the commands, the unit spent much of the day digging up soil, then packing it into bags. So if someone shoots at us, the bullets will hit the bags, Skobenko explains. He and his fellow overnight soldiers know very well how useful those defenses might be. They've already had several arm standoffs. The unit cleaned and checked their weapons and moved on to mixing the liquid for Molotov cocktails, following instructions on a poster handed out by the authorities, filling several hundred glass bottles. In his downtime, Skobenko checked his work messages. The 30-year-old CEO of the largest independent outfit tracking disinformation in Ukraine, Voxcheck, which supplies research to companies like Facebook. As Skobenko shifts from combating the Russians online to fighting them face-to-face, -face, Voxcheck has continued to churn out reports chronicling false information disseminated by the Russians, about Ukrainian shelling mass breakouts from Ukrainian jails and home invasions by the Ukrainian National Guard. I didn't expect my country to go to war. Since Russia's assault on Ukraine began less than a week ago, the entire nation has quickly shifted to war mode. More than 600, OOO people have fled. The two largest cities, the capital Kyiv and Kharkiv to the east, have come under attack. About 80% of the 190 OOO Russian troops amassed on Ukrainian borders have entered the country, meeting spirited resistance that has unexpectedly slowed the better equipped Russians. Part of the defense involves volunteers like Skobenko. Nearly 40 OOO answered the government's call to arms, echoing one made eight years ago during a conflict with pro Russian separatists. Compared to the other recruits, Skobenko has a unique perspective on their adversaries. He has spent years trying to foil Russia's ongoing digital campaign against Ukraine. Voxcheck was founded in 2014 by Timofey Milovanov, an economist and University of Pittsburgh professor, following another moment of tumult, a civilian-led revolution that forced President Viktor Yanukovych out of office and sparking a reform mindset in Ukraine. Then, as now, Ukraine's media landscape remained skewed by Russia, with consumers susceptible to Putin's propaganda pushed through newspapers, television and, of course, the Internet, largely through social networks maintained by Russian state-affiliated outlets like Sputnik and Darty. Meta, Twitter, YouTube and others earlier this week either banned or restricted those publications. There seemed to be a place, and a need, for an independent fact check outlet to call out misleading information from Russian and, at times, the Ukrainian government, too, 